and welcome to the second EAFA podcast episode brought to you by the European Alliance for Apprenticeships. This episode aims to shed light on a very topical issue, especially within the wider context of the current European year of youth, namely the subject of boosting the attractiveness of apprenticeships across Europe. In particular, this episode will focus on key insights around what concrete steps can be taken to further strengthen the perception of apprenticeships as an attractive study choice. My name is Maria Melstweit Rosem, an education policy expert with the Chorus, and I am really excited to be moderating this episode uh, where we will first hear from some apprentices themselves about their own experiences and what they think could and should be done to raise awareness about the many benefits and advantages of taking on an apprenticeship. We will then sit down with Marcus Wright, who is joining us on behalf of the European Apprentices Network, also known as AN. Marcus is also a member of the Youth Committee of the European Trade Union Confederation and the chairman of STTK Students in Finland, with STTK being the Finnish Confederation of Professionals. As such, Marcus is bringing in a, a multitude of experiences and, and insights from across the many hats that he wears, and we're really eager to hear his thoughts on this topic. Uh, but before diving into our discussion, I am absolutely delighted to give the floor to our podcast host, Anna Carrero, uh, to provide a bit more context for today's topic and also why this episode was recorded uh, from Barcelona this time around. Anna is Deputy Head of Unit for E3 on VET, Apprenticeships and Adult Learning at the European Commission's Directorate General for Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion. Without further ado, Anna. The floor is yours. Thank you, Maria. Indeed, the European Commission is striving to give young people more and better opportunities for the future. And to this end, 2022 has now been declared the European Year of Youth. It's important to emphasize that apprenticeships have a key role to play in this effort to empower young people, in particular by offering a clear route to the labor market with a practical dimension to the learning process. In this podcast episode, we will therefore focus on what can be done to effectively communicate the clear benefits and advantages of apprenticeships and place them on the radar as a positive learning choice of more young people, parents, counselors, and teachers. As you may remember, this is in line with one of the aims of EAFA, the European Alliance for Apprenticeships, that seeks to improve the image of apprenticeships among other objectives. Our podcast team is currently recording today from the Voice of Apprentices in the European Year of Youth, an event taking place in Barcelona. There are about 150 persons uh, participating in, in person and additional people following online. The aim of the event is to raise awareness about the importance of apprentices representation in national and regional structures identify good practices, and discuss how to make apprenticeships more attractive for young people. We will also launch the Renewed European Apprentices Network. This is one of the key actions planned under the Youth Employment Support Initiative and also contributes to make the first principle of the European pillar of social rights about education, training, and lifelong learning a reality on the ground. And now we would actually like to start this episode differently by asking a few apprentices about their views on how to improve the image of apprenticeships before sitting down with our main guest. Maria, I will hand the floor back over to you for this. Thank you so much, Anna. Clearly, we're dealing with some very timely topics here. Uh, and I'm actually really eager to hear from some of the uh, apprentices who are present here today at the event. Uh, and so for that purpose, I have with me uh, Gonzalo, I have Sarah, and I have Dustin. Uh, and I would actually like to hear from all three of you really on one specific question. Uh, and that is, do you think apprenticeships is an attractive study choice for young people today? Um, and what do you think we can do to improve the image of apprenticeships further? Uh, Gonzalo, maybe we can start with, with you. Oh, yeah. uh, I think that uh, apprenticeship is a great option for young, pe young people. Uh, today, because I think that uh, now in in the jobs that are in demand, they, they are requiring kind of experience, and it's a great uh, chance to 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 get the the knowledge 
and after uh, make it happen with the practice in, in a company like uh, I am. Mm. That's a really good point. Um, and uh, the other question? And, and, and what do you think, you know, in terms of the image of apprenticeships, you know, do, oh. what, how, how do you think you can communicate all of the benefits that you just mentioned better to, to students, to uh, maybe teachers and, and parents as well, and other sort of key stakeholders? Um, I think that uh, we, we should uh, promote more, like uh, I include myself as well, as uh, we are doing right now, or, or, or all of us, uh, just uh, raising our voice and telling that it's a great option. Uh, probably uh, some people doesn't look like that before, before they, they used to categorize uh, this kind of uh, training or they used to, to do it in, it was like a bad scene. And, and now the, I think that all the companies want to, to, to get the experienced people and, and we have to promote it like a, they are a providing like a good uh, professionals to the labor market. Mm -hmm. It's a really important point yeah. that you mentioned there in terms of that sort of trajectory into the, to the labor market and of course apprenticeships are central there. Uh, Sarah, I don't know if, if you have anything to add, you know, how has that experience been for you? Do you think it's a, an attractive choice for young people and, and sort of, you know, what do you think can be done to, to improve that image? Yes, um, I think that apprenticeships are an attractive choice for young people, but I think that young people don't see apprenticeships as an attractive choice because most of them relate apprenticeships to uh, boring tasks, minimum or zero salary, and I think it's for this reason that it's very important to bring visibility to good dual bid projects. Mm. And for example, actually, I used to think like that, but when I first started my apprenticeships at Fundación Bertisman, I found a very different scenery because I'm really enjoying my apprenticeships. I'm learning a lot and I feel more confident every day. And my manager also gives me some responsibilities. There is something that I didn't expect. And I, I consider that this apprenticeship, dual bid this apprenticeships, is helping me grow not only professionally but also in terms of self-confidence and personality because I feel I felt like no no security like working with uh, marketing and communication staff and now I really feel confident with that and I think that what we can do to to renew the image of apprenticeships uh, among young people it's uh, like Gonzalo said, like raising our voice. And Somos FP Dual, it's a network we have in Spain where young people talk to other young people and promoting these uh, dual bit apprenticeships. And I think this is very important to break all the stereotypes are built um, around apprenticeships nowadays. That's yeah. a really, really great uh, thing to hear that you had such a positive experience, Sarah, yeah. in, in your own, uh, you know, apprenticeship, and, and that has sort of changed your view. Um, exactly. and, and I think you know you both have mentioned some really interesting things in terms of, as you said, you know, raising your voice, you know, also making sure that apprentices themselves are a part of that sort of communication uh, to, to make sure that it's it's uh, perceived, you know, in a positive way, and that all of these benefits that you just mentioned are also sort of, um, yeah. Put on, put on display, so to speak. Um, and um, I'll move to, to you, Destin. Uh, what yeah, do you sure. think, you know, specifically? Uh, do you think that um, a friendship is an attractive choice for young people today? Maybe you can start with that. Yeah. What we can do to improve these, uh, uh, to improve apprenticeships, uh, would be, first of all, like the um, modularization of. Um, the learning content uh, in vocational schools uh, because all of this or most of this is already taught in general education schools and to have students or apprentices focus on their strengths and pick what they really want to focus on and excel on these things is a really important part here instead of doing the groundwork all over again. Uh, yeah, just the basic level of things for second, for some, maybe the third time. Uh, it's all valuable time and uh, yeah, we should be able to choose ourselves how to, uh, how to use that time for us uh, the best. Also, in terms of um, 
the validation uh, specific, more specific, the academics, uh, the academic validation of the acquired knowledge um, you get from an apprenticeship should be, um, yeah, kind of um, put on the same level as the knowledge you get from like studying at uni. Um, and we could do that with the introduction of the ECTS system, uh, the ECTS points for uh, yeah, for apprentices, so they can uh, go along after their apprenticeship. Um, so the way is already like paved for future academic growth. I think that's a really good point we should start on. Well, thanks a lot uh, to all three of you for sharing your views. That's really, really interesting to hear. And I think you've given us a lot to think about going into the next segment of the episode where our interviewer, uh, Chiara, uh, will sit down with uh, interviewee Marcus Wright from the European Apprentices Network uh, to speak a bit more about you know, the attractiveness of apprenticeships and what can we do to further improve uh, the image. So uh, I will just say over to you, uh, Chiara. Thank you, Maria, and uh, a very big thanks to, to all of the apprentice, apprentices uh, here with us today for, for sharing. And of course, a very warm welcome to you, Marcus, and thank you for joining us on behalf of the European Apprentices Network. I would like to start the, this uh, little chat by addressing something that, uh, in my view, is a bit of a paradox. So apprenticeships are generally considered to be an effective tool in the transition from school to work for young people because they provide young people with very relevant labor market skills and not only the, the technical ones, but also workplace skills and, and workplace experience. Still, in some cases, apprenticeships are still considered a, a less prestigious educational path. What do you think about this? What is your experience and, and what are the challenges that you see? Well, it is true that um, in some countries it has been um, introduced as an easier route in comparison to like uh, universities or other more formal routes. Um, that is really sad because um, if you would have to, would uh, sell the apprenticeship um, as a great way uh, to get your education, I think then they would be a way better and seen as a way better way to get it but um the general discussion is so that um young people see them as less valuable or are they are less inclined to uh get into uh, apprenticeships because from their parents and stuff they hear that well universities are the better route but um so in some countries this has been done very well where they uh, marketed uh, apprenticeships as great options in uh, Germany and the UK and Austria at least they are, have promoted the apprenticeships as a really great way to get your education and that is seen as a great way to get, you, get your education so that is something we have to work towards and of course when we think about what What's, where should we begin with the apprenticeships? I think uh, the main point is that we have to um, make sure that apprenticeships are uh, treated fairly and then they, uh, they are apprented in work, working places and that uh, the apprenticeships actually um, provide concrete evidence, uh, concrete opportunities, sorry, uh, for personal and uh, professional development. And well, young people should just not choose their career path or educational path based on what society views as uh, important or as the best way, but rather how they find themselves, how they learn themselves the best way. So they should follow their own dreams and own aspirations on education as well. Yeah, that's a, a very important point and, and many thanks for making it. Um, you said that there are different attitudes in different countries and I understand from what you're saying that in those countries or regions where there is a clearer understanding of the benefits and opportunities offered by apprenticeships, they are considered 
very favorably. So my question to you is, how can we communicate more effectively these benefits and opportunities? And what do you think um, is the role of public authorities and vocational education and training institutions in this respect? Well, of course, in line with the uh, work that we've done in EAN, we want to bring uh, the voices of apprentices to the middle, to the focus of public authorities and companies. We need to listen to our apprentices, uh, listen to our students. And um, of course, we can um, make the image better and educate people uh, in like schools with um, information days or campaigns or such. We can have ambassadors, we can uh, bring the uh, voices of the apprentices to the schools where the young people are deciding on the education that they're going to get. And of course, uh, providing a proper um, gui guidance counsel counseling service is a must because we have to have a proper training for the uh, guidance counselors and uh, career counselors that are doing the work within our schools, talking to the students. So the information has to be easily available for them. They have to, uh, well, in the best case, they would be informed by the uh, vocational training uh, centers about the possibilities for the students. Um, and public authorities also have a major role when we talk about attractiveness and um, uh, communication with that and what what possibilities the apprenticeships uh, provide for young people. Because uh, for instance, instance um, for university students, it's always been clear that you can enter, enter apprenticeships if you want to. You can just jump off. But the other, other direction, if you want to change from apprentice to university, that's made to seem much more uh, difficult than it actually is, because you can change between them. It, of course, does require your own work, but so does everything. So with the right motivation, you can actually do it. And that should be encouraged with people who might not have found their way when they were younger, but a few years ahead, they're like, okay, I want to be an engineer or a doctor. Then they, that should be uh, expanded upon. Yeah. Okay, you go be a doctor because you can do it if you study. Um, and of course, the mobility thing is a, um, a great uh, possibility that always, uh, or not always, but sometimes are left out from apprenticeships because uh, everyone knows that Erasmus uh, is with universities, but a very few know that you can actually. Uh, do that also as an apprentice. So we do need to have a better way to inform and uh, bring out the possibilities to the students that we want to, who we want to have the possibilities. Oh, absolutely. And, and thank you very much for making this point because Erasmus is not only for universities. Erasmus is for vocational education and training too. It is for apprentices. It is for staff. So mobility is a really important experience. And it's also part of, of the European framework for quality and effective apprenticeships to encourage uh, young apprentices to have uh, a mobility experience in another EU country. So thank you very much for making um, this point. What about the role of companies? Because they have a very clear stake in this. And I would say that they have even a double interest because on the one hand, apprentices, especially towards the end of their apprenticeship, uh, where they are uh, more expert and more knowledgeable, they, they really concretely contribute to the work of the organization. But employers also have an interest to, after the apprenticeship is concluded, when people enter the labor market, because it is in their interest, of course, to have a, a skilled and experienced young people that enter uh, the labor force and then can be available uh, for them to recruit. 
Um, so what is, in your view, the role of companies and worker representatives in making apprenticeships a, a more attractive choice, especially for young people? Well, um, the companies have a huge role. It can't be uh, disregarded in any way because a lot of learning happens within the workplace. So you need a lot of resources for the company to actually um, know how to, you guide the students. You need to know how you uh, explain the complex stuff that you have to explain to the students because otherwise that's going to co go uh, completely over their heads for the just thought as students. Um, it's a sad fact that even though you would have an amazing place for your apprenticeship, uh, if you have an incapable mentor, the mentor can actually ruin the experience for you. You can be just left with um, problems with your studies and lack of motivation after the appre apprenticeship instead of actually gaining something for it. Um, some bigger institutions uh, in Finland, such as hospital districts like um, the Helsinki University Hospital District um, have their own programs where, where they train their uh, mentors who mentor the students within their hospital. And these are great programs and they should be expanded upon to ha make our mentors as good as they can be, the best mentors that can provide the best, best education for our students. And uh, the, of course, the representation is really important. Um, I can speak from the Helsinki University Hospital Districts because I'm a part of that group that has um, it's I, I guess I, I can't translate it straight, but it's the uh, group that focuses on how we enhance the student mentoring within the hospital district. And these are uh, the type of places we want to have young people in. Uh, there are a different variations of this. Germany has these young workers councils and uh, some countries have some other places that young people can affect uh, their studies within. But the main thing is that the voice of the apprentice is actually heard. It's an actual expert of uh, his or her uh, area, what they're doing at the moment. Uh, and they can provide really, really valuable uh, information on it. And that has to be taken seriously by the companies and uh, uh, people who affect the apprenticeships. And, well, of course, the third thing I can bring up is, of course, pay. Because a lot of apprenticeships are unpaid still at this moment, which is uh, quite sad because... Uh, the students do bring a lot of value to the companies, at least at the end of their studies, when they are just finishing up and uh, just doing the last bits, they do have an amazing value for the company that they provide as good a service as they will provide when they finish their studies, but still they get no pay for it, which is sad. Um, there is some differences between the universities and uh, vocational training and apprenticeships, for example, in Finland, with regards to pay costs um, for medical students. For example, you have a minimum pay of around 1,600 euros. But uh, when you talk about nursing students like me, there is no such thing. We don't get paid for our uh, apprenticeships. We don't get paid for anything we get the small 250 euros from governments and that's what you have to live on but that's not enough money so if we would want to make apprenticeships seem more desirable we could pay just pay for them you can pay for 1600 euros a month for doing these apprenticeships of your motivation will skyrocket. You don't have to worry about how would you pay your rent, how will you buy food or whatever, because the amount of stress we have about our financial situation when we're doing apprenticeships is huge. And that has a huge impact on the motivation of students when we're doing apprenticeships. Yeah, and these were very important uh, topics that were uh, largely discussed also 
during during our event on on the voice of of apprentices in, in Europe. Uh, uh, and you mentioned uh, some structure support. You mentioned pay, of course, which is very important. Do you find that smaller companies might have bigger challenges to comply to to this kind of support that apprentices need to learn and to do? Uh, their job well and and do you have any tip on on what we could do to encourage uh, smaller enterprises to also uh, get into the arena and offer quality apprentices apprenticeships uh, yeah uh, smaller companies have the problem of resources because when you have thousands of employees you can have these training courses and it's easier to have them but smaller companies might not have the resources but at this point, I would encourage the companies, the smaller companies, to work together with schools, which with vocational education centers and stuff, so they can get the training training with the schools. But I think for apprentices, the um, chance in smaller companies is that you can make a bigger impact in there. Because in a big company, while you're doing your a small piece of work as an apprentice you might not see the results or anything so fast but if you think about a company with let's say 10 people working for it your um the work you do you see possibly way more uh results from your work so that might be a lot more rewarding for the apprentice to work in a smaller company that's a very good point marcus thank you very much for for making it and it's not something that 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 we hear often and why we don't hear this often because uh, it doesn't come from the apprentices. And now that you you can actually tell you about uh, tell us about your experience, this is a very important perspective. And I will use this in the meetings also with the companies to promote it. Um, earlier you talked about families uh, and young people are not alone when when they make a choice and, and and when they think about what their what their future job will be and what is the the, the best pathway to to get there so uh families uh teachers and trainers uh career counselor they all play a strong role in helping young people uh, make up their minds to choose their next move. Uh, so do you think that there is um, something we can do to target a bit more the communication uh, on, on the benefits and opportunities of apprenticeships to these kind of groups? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, families play a massive, massive role. Because if you think about it, um, in Finland, when you apply for vocational education, you're 15 or 16. So the amount of power your families, your parents have is, is huge. And you, of course, seek advice from your parents, seek advice from your families. So uh, to educate the families also on the possibilities of um, apprenticeships is really important because if they don't understand the uh, system um, completely, they might just disregard apprentices completely. And that's a negative impact on the young person who might want to get a nurse education or whatever that is on the side of apprenticeship. So uh, families need to be educated more on the subject of uh, apprentices. And of course, when we think about career advisors and stuff, they need to be also educated by the vocational education centers. Because uh, every young person, at least in Finland, goes and talks 45 minutes when they're about to apply for school with the guidance counselor. And then we discuss and go through what should I do and what do I want to do? So. That's another point that if the guidance counselor isn't aware of all the apprenticeships um, possibilities, because there are a lot of them in the bigger cities, then it, uh, the young person might miss out on those and might realize in a later point that, hey, this is something I should have done. But yeah, it's everyone has their worth in this. So everyone needs to be aware of the possibilities i think i've said it so many times already but keeping everyone families guidance counselors teachers and every person who's in touch with the young person needs to know that what options we have so they can uh, 
offer the options fairly instead of uh, uh, favoring one. Thank you. Thank you very much. And maybe to stay on the topic of, of choice, because it's it's a bit linked to this, I would like to, to talk to you about the gender stereotypes. We see this happening in general on the labor market. We, we know that there are some sectors that are uh, where we find predominantly women and others where we find predominantly men. And this, of course, is also reflected then in the uh, choices in terms of vocational education and training and apprenticeships. What can we do to address this? Um, it's a massive, massive issue. Um, and uh, for my, myself, it's a very familiar issue because as I studied, um, the pianos. So um, most of our class was female, uh, but we've uh, made some progress in the last 20 years because uh, we were going through our um, very old or very old from the 90s uh, pictures of um, class of 91, 92 and stuff like that. We could see maybe one or two males within the group. But when we look at uh, groups nowadays, like when I started four years ago, we had five or six uh, males in that class. So it has gone a little bit better, but we still have work to do. And in my point of view, how we can uh, make that happen is by um, encourage, encouraging the uh, young person that you can do what you want to do instead of what society wants you to do. If you want to be an engineer, go ahead, be an engineer. If you want to be a nurse, go ahead and be a nurse. Uh, we have to break those gender stereotypes and not uh, be surprised if some boy wants to become a nurse. Well, he wants to be a nurse, so what's wrong with that? And if some girl wants to be an um, engineer, then they can be an engineer. And if some other sex wants to be something else, then whatever, because uh, we need professionals in all most of our um, or all of our sectors. So it's important to encourage the young people to make their decisions on what they want to do, because passion is what gives you the most motivation. So following your passion, it's 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 really important. Absolutely. And in fact, the motto of the European Vocational Skills Week, which is also the motto of, of, of our policy, policy and what we do in vocational education and training is discover your talent. So uh, every person uh, should follow, should first of all find out what their talent is and then, as you say, follow, follow their passion. And, and in this case, it's really very important to, to show to young people that they have very uh, wide options and they are not constrained by uh, a sector whether there are more uh, female or males in, in that sector. So thank you very much for that. And, and to conclude, one very last question, of course, on the European Apprentices Network that has just been relaunched. Uh, what role do you see for the network in, in boosting the attractiveness of apprenticeships? Uh, I think we can be a critical friends towards public authorities and stuff because we are comprised of uh, apprentices. So we can provide actual uh, feedback and uh, provide the voice of apprenticeships that we need so much within our system. So I think that's the best thing we have to offer is actual representation of apprentices within public uh, authorities, within companies, so we can make the voice of apprentices heard. Thank you very much. And we really look forward to working with you and the European Apprentices Network uh, to make uh, apprenticeships uh, an ever better uh, choice uh, for young people. Uh, thank you very much, Marcus, for your time and for your insights. It was really a pleasure uh, to hear your take on these important issues. Thanks a lot for having me and listening to me. Maria, I guess the floor is now back to you for some final updates. So uh, goodbye, everyone, from me and until the next time. Yes, many thanks to all of our guests today for 
sharing your time and invaluable insights. It's been really, uh, really, really educational and very much appreciated. Uh, as far as our listeners and watchers are concerned, I would like to encourage you to firstly, share the episode with your colleagues, and secondly, join the conversation by sharing your views on the discussion on social media by using the established APRENEU hashtag. This episode is available on YouTube as EAFA Vodcast and on Spotify as well as SoundCloud as EAFA Podcast with a P. Finally, we encourage you to tune in for the next episode as we dive into the topic of strengthening the overall quality and effectiveness of apprenticeships with experiences from across Europe. And of course, as we've seen today, this is a topic that is very much linked to the topic of improving the overall perception and image of apprenticeships. As a last uh, call for action, please make sure to subscribe to this channel in order to get our post notifications as soon as this and any future episodes are made available. In the meantime, stay safe and many thanks for listening and for watching. Mm -hmm.